though it is an act. And that's how the real world works. It's a paradox. Now, when I was 22 years old or 25, none of it was an act. In fact, I was totally out of control and I'm still out of control. I mean, what do you, I mean, is it an act when you drive your car down the road and control it? Or are you just supposed to just wildly start turning the wheel everywhere and putting the accelerator on? Uh, when I was on the BBC last year covering Bilderberg on their big morning show, and when, the, when we went off air, I stopped yelling at him, and I got up and said, okay, thank you, and shook the guy's hand. He goes, that's all an act. And I went, no, it's not an act. We're not on air. You were talking over me. I talked over you. I want to make a big scene here showing that it's not business as usual. That's not an act. So he tweeted out that I admitted it was all an act. And the reason I raise that act point is I get asked that question more than anything. More than why aren't you dead, I get asked, is it an act? I don't know, is it an act? I told you the NSA was spying on everything and how they were doing it and it's all come out. Was it an act? I told you the military is trying to take your guns and now it's admitted. Was it an act? I told you the FCC was going to put monitors and all the businesses, uh, all the media organizations and all the stuff. Look, I'm just covering what's going on. Is it an act when I put white makeup on because the Joker was coming out four years ago and tried to hijack that for some liberty issues? Yeah, it was an act. I, I don't really laugh and scream and throw papers around and talk about how much I love evil. It's called satire. It's very frustrating. Now, I wanted to bring David Knight in here. He's got the documents. We can document Cam that in a moment. This is some breaking FCC news. Judge Napolitano, it's up on Infowars.com called Government Monitoring Newsrooms, Radical New Era of Tyranny. And, and, and that's not a sensational headline. That's what it is. If you catch Jeffrey Dahmer with 10 guys in chemical tubs, in barrels, this is a radical form of evil and a macabre uh, nightmare laboratory of torture we've discovered. If I was a prosecutor, that's how I would describe it. Well, what's Obama doing? Well, a radical new era of tyranny, as Ted Cruz said, frightening and dangerous. How would you describe Obama? You called the FCC. You got letters from him. You got a response from him. I want you to run with the guys and write an article after this because this is breaking news, David. Mm -hmm. You're doing real journalism here. God bless you. Uh, just you churn out so much real research. What would you call Obama first? What would you describe this transformation? Well, it's definitely authoritarian. What we're seeing here is an open, in-your-face kind of criminal corruption. So it's okay. naked mobsterism. Absolutely. They, they brought it up to a new level. As people have pointed out with the IRS, Nixon did this a long time ago, but he was impeached. It was 100 names in a safe, though. Exactly. Not they, billions. They, 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 the IRS didn't actually execute it, and the IRS didn't actually defend it and cover it up. Now they do it openly, and they continue to do it even after they're exposed. So they clearly don't care about that. We knew we weren't going to get any answers from the FCC, so what we did was we videotaped the whole process of running around, getting answering machines. The guy sends us over to the media relations. Is that on the news tonight? It was on the news last night. I didn't even know that. Yeah. Well, oh, take your nice. thing, get it, let's get it up on the site. Good Lord. And so finally we, we call him back and say, hey, nobody's answering that number. He's put himself on answering machine now. So the guy I usually watch the news. I missed it last night. I apologize. The guy they had as a contact person basically didn't want to be the contact person. And we had a difficult time getting somebody from media relations to talk to us. Finally, they sent us a modified definition of the study as well as a response to a congressman who's complaining about this. Now, this really started to pick up steam. We reported on this quite some time back, but it started picking up steam about February the 10th, I believe. Uh, yeah, that's when it was. We had one of the FCC commissioners write a scathing op-ed piece attacking this whole study. And in response to that, congressional committee started, so they, they sent out this. And by the way, this is Fairness Doctrine by Uber Stealth. Yes, yes. It's Fairness Doctrine, but you can also see when you look at the report, you can see how they stonewall us, why they accuse us of ambush journalism when we're trying to finally get transparency from them. Every time we try to talk to the government, it's the same story. Nobody will talk to you. Nobody will grant you an interview. So finally, when you go there and show up, and start to talk to somebody, oh, this is ambush journal. You guys are evil you know, because you're coming here to talk to me. They want to cover up everything. They all think that they're the CIA. Everything is classified. Nobody wants to talk about anything. And of course, there's also the aspect that they're in a bureaucracy. They don't have the courage to say something because they're afraid they might say something that hasn't been vetted and cleared by their master. So all they will do is send out press releases about this. But listen to the way they change the study over time. When they first put it out, they said, in order to assess whether the government action is needed to ensure that the information needs of all Americans are being met, including women and minorities, that was the original purpose of it. Now that they're getting criticism, what they're saying is that it's about the, it's a study of the ability of entrepreneurs and small business to compete in the mar media marketplace. 
So it went from looking at the information needs of women and minorities to seeing how we can help small businesses. See, they're from the government, they're here to help us. Oh, I mean, you're not a <laughs> racist, are you? You're not against women and minorities that are really the super majority. Women are 51% of the population in mammals, and here they are 52% for a strange reason. And then you've got the, quote, minorities that are the majority. So we're talking 77% of people. Oh, you're against the 77%. Well, the whole thing comes. Hey, up. turn your guns in, or you're, or you're against women. Yeah, the whole thing is very phony. One of the thing, one of the quotes from this op-ed piece by the FCC commissioner, his name is Ajit Pai. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's A J I T. But he said, "How can they want to go in and look at the news judgments of editors?" And he says, "How can the news judgments made by editors and station managers impede small business from entering the broadcast industry?" It has nothing to do. Well, with what does some bureaucrat know about news editors and people that have worked their whole lives in this? That's right. It's all about government being my god, and these are political commissars. I want to come back and talk more about this. Here's your report. That's what I don't like about the new InfoWars design. I wanted that same links at the top of every page to our YouTube, our Facebook, our Twitter, so I can go through every day and see it. There it is. FCC refuses to respond to the accusations of media control. And, I mean, this is big. Uh, you know, FCC, FCC stonewalls media. Uh, FCC accuses journalists of ambush journalism for asking questions. Introducing yeah. Yeah. Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gate. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. To thank you for being a loyal listener, we have a limited time freebie offer for you. Claim your free heirloom tomato seeds, just pay shipping, right now at 123freeseeds.com. These aren't ordinary seeds. These are heirloom, non-genetically modified super seeds that are open pollinated and can be grown, harvested, and replanted endlessly. These survival seeds are actually more valuable than gold in a crisis. Go to 123freeseeds.com and you can get an airtight storage packet of 150 super seeds free while supplies last to say thank you for being a loyal listener. First come, first served. Just cover shipping. Go to 123freeseeds.com now to see if your free heirloom seeds are still available. That's 123freeseeds.com. From the Berkey Guy, now comes Survival Cave Food Storage. All natural canned meats with no MSG, fillers, or chemicals, and with up to a 15-year shelf life. On sale this week, 12 14.5-ounce cans of ground beef was $123, now just $113. Or 12 28-ounce cans was $164, now only $154. Free shipping within the U.S. Go to GoBerkey.com or call 877-886-3653. Helping thousands prepare since 2005, GoBerkey.com. It's time to kick some ash because cigarettes have met their match. Smokers are switching to Vapriate e-liquid by La Cig because when you kick ash, you kick tar and smelly smoke too. La Cig smokes the competition with real people customer service, a seven-day satisfaction guarantee, and same-day fast free shipping. Become a vapor today at LaCig.com, spelled L-E-C-I-G.com. La Cig e-cigarettes, kick some ash. Ted Nugent called Obama a subhuman mongrel, which I don't think is an accurate characterization, and got criticized uh, by people like Rand Paul and Ted Cruz, and so he apologized. 
And I guess the implication is, oh, you know, he, he's being racist or something. That's just a way to insult somebody. Obama is a peacock of evil in a fancy suit trained to lie and deceive people uh, with a super high IQ and is an American psycho. How's that sound? Obama represents the criminal kleptocratic class of fraud and deceit. So they won't criticize that because that describes what he is. Um, but um, probably not the best term to describe Obama, but this is a guy that goes around killing people with drones saying he's really good at killing people like he did it himself. And uh, this is a person overriding our entire Bill of Rights and Constitution. He is a plague. And you go, well, Alex, you say he's a puppet. Why are you saying all this? Because he's the front man of it all. David Knight, uh, getting back into the FCC, saying they're going to be basically coming in with a new fairness doctrine to restrict free speech and put their spies everywhere, their political correct spies. Um, continuing with your uh, contact with the FCC, I mean, and there's video of this uh, now that we have, I probably should just air your report, maybe I'll do it in the next hour, where they're saying it's ambush journalism and acting like there's the CIA that the media would dare call them. Yeah, they don't want to talk to anybody. I mean, it's so bizarre that that media, you're supposed to just take their press releases like dinosaur media and repeat them, that you would dare call them mm -hmm. and dare want to know about their plans to come tell us what to do. Can you imagine one of these people coming to visit us? Yeah. Oh, yeah. One of the things the FCC commissioner pointed out in his op-ed piece. Did some tar and feathers? I'm sorry. Yeah. He said... The FCC has no authority to regulate the print media, and yet they're going to be included in this study that they've got going on. So this is much broader than their power. And it's huge power grab. It's, it's definitely we, it, it brings up concerns of the fairness doctrine because they're they're highlighting the concerns of women in media. We had 10 Democratic senators a few years ago, mainly women, come out and do this mm -hmm. call for the fairness doctrine. Mm -hmm. But it also there's something else going on here, too. If you remember, the Voice of America and Radio Free Europe, they were created at the beginning of the Cold War. They're not going to operate domestically. This is really that shift. And quote exactly. the Pentagon four months ago announcing they're going to reach out to the media. Exactly. And so when we look at them getting into the content of this stuff, when they start looking closely at content, when they start analyzing how are people putting the, the news organizations together, we should keep in mind not only the NSA, but we need to understand that they're going to actively propagandize the American people. That's what the federal government has in its sights. Oh, yeah, they're going to give you a good a, a good rating if you carry a certain amount of their bull. That's right. That's right. So to say that this has nothing to do with content is not true. And see, the FCC is supposed to scrupulously stay away from content. But if they want to talk about barriers to participation, talk about the barriers that they set up to microbroadcasting or other things like that that would di directly affect small business. Yeah, why didn't they open up all the uh, high-def digital band to community like they were supposed to do? They didn't do that. That's right. That's right. And that's really what the FCC was there for. It was there to make sure that people don't overrun each other as far as broadcasting frequencies and that sort of thing goes. This brings up very troubling concerns about them getting involved in content, which is what nobody wants to see. Well, even the head of the agency says it's outrageous. It is outrageous tyranny. Yeah. And it shows the sky's the limit. Once they start getting away with whatever they want, the sky's the limit, David. Yeah, that's right. Describe more of what's in the video that we're going to post on Infowars.com. Well, one of the things we wanted to ask them was, you know, how do you define whether or not information, how do you find information needs being met? How do you measure that? What's the cost of this study? Can we see the questions? They wouldn't give us any information. They absolutely shut it down. We're going to give you a prepared statement that's very bland and general. And what they did was they changed the mission statement from saying they're going to focus on the information needs of women and minorities to saying we're going to focus on the barriers to competition for small business entrepreneurs. Wow, wow, amazing. Just. And, then, and this is just the cover for their takeover. David, you want to hold over? You got any more? Visit uh, that's pretty much everything that we got from it. We're, right, we're, right, we're out of time. We're out of time. Great job. More on the news tonight, 7 o'clock. Why does the United States spend the largest percentage of GDP in the world on health care? Why do we have the highest cancer rates on the planet? The highest rates of diabetes, autism, and every other major disease. It all comes down to one thing. We are what we eat. Our food is devoid of nutrition and processed with poisons and additives. Our water is filled with toxic poisons and big pharma runoff. 
All of this has been engineered by design. We can turn the tide against the eugenicist by giving ourselves the nutrients our body desperately needs. To learn more, visit InfoWarsHealth.com. The site is literally packed with audio and video. Fe